Hello everyone, we're here at the Energy Revolution Gallery in the Science Museum, which is currently under occupation by a group of scientists, young people, teachers and supporters. They're here because the science, this gallery, this particular gallery, the Energy Revolution Gallery, is actually sponsored by the coal giant Adani. It's sponsored, the Science Museum claims, by Adani Green, the uh, quote-unquote green energy branch of um, the Adani conglomerate. Um, but for those who don't know, the Adani conglomerate is, um, so it, it, it's, an in, it's an Indian company, um, and they get 60% of their revenue from coal. And they are currently looking to expand the coal business. Um, and particularly, actually, at the moment, they are building new coal mines in India, and the lo they want to build the largest coal mine in, in Australia soon. They actually, they're, they're starting to make the largest coal mine that Australia has ever seen um, at a time when the IPCC reports are telling us that we can have no more coal, we can have no more, that most of the reserves of fossil fuels currently in the ground and, current, and that have been dug up cannot be burnt if we want to remain within 1.5, even 2 degrees of pre-industrial warming. And as many of you might know, coal is actually the dirtiest, or one of the dirtiest fossil fuels out there. Um, in recent times, a lot of companies are ruling out coal. Um, the IPCC reports are encouraging <laughs> that no new coal um, is mined. Um, there's been, you know, fevered arguments in COP about coal. Um, I think at the moment, most companies, most um, companies and countries have agreed to no more um, unabated coal. Yet, the Adani Group is looking to expand coal. Um, additionally to that, Adani is actually also implicated in many human rights abuses um, in the building of its mines. Um, more on that a bit later. Um, and also, importantly, Adani is also implicated in the arms trade. They work um, with Elbis Systems, which is an Israeli weapons manufacturer, um, and a joint venture, Adani Elbit uh, Joint Manufacturing, to build um, drones, basically, the Hermes 900 drones, which are currently being used in Gaza to perpetuate the current genocide of the Palestinian people by the Israeli Defense Force. So it's a very, it's a very dirty company. Um, the Science Museum is ex still accepting funding and sponsorship from them. And I've just recently opened this new gallery called Energy Revolution, which is all about how um, we can have an energy revolution to change, um, about the future of energy production, um, and it's sponsored by a coal company, <laughs> um, which is just incredible um, because we are moving to move away from coal and you know what kind of solution can we have? And how can you believe that a company, like a 60% of its profits from coal would give a totally unbiased opinion on this? And many also believe that just taking any kind of funding from this company is blood money because of its human rights abuses, its use of coal, and its um, production of weaponry with Elbit. So, the museum is currently being occupied by a group of about 30 supporters, um, ranging from scientists, um, who obviously have a very personal connection to the Science Museum, who are asking the museum to drop this sponsorship, to drop this company, do not associate with this company anymore. Um, it's also filled with young people asking the Science Museum, this place of education, to please uh, drop Adani. So basically what I'm filming right here is um, the Adani coal pile. <laughs> um, so this is a coal pile that's created by the occupiers, who started occupying last night, and slept over, and planned to stay till Sunday. Um, so they created this little art exhibit, um, exhibition in the center of this energy gallery to show where the money for this gallery really came from. Coal. 
And written around it is um, cards stating people's hopes for what the gallery could be and what we would like the gallery to do. Um, so we've got cards here, for example, this one. That an institution like the Science Museum is working with such a rogue company is a disgrace. And that's from Dr. Aaron Tiri from Cardiff. We might talk to him later. And all of these are just comments for the museum that we'll give to the museum to tell them why this group has occupied for the weekend in this new gallery. And the, gal and the timing of this is because the gallery has just opened and they will start accepting school groups on Monday. So this is going to be used, this gallery is going to be used to teach children about energy <laughs> funded directly by a group that is wrecking their futures through coal use <laughs> and wrecking the lives of many others including indigenous people in the countries of India and Australia in the construction of their mines and the Palestinian people in the production of arms. So let's see if we can talk uh, to a few of the occupiers who um, spent the night last night very bravely in this big, <laughs> brightly lit gallery. And as you can see, they also aren't letting the public into the gallery while the protesters are here. Clearly, they do not want the public to engage with our protesters. So let me see if I, if anyone I can talk to. I trust them. Would you like to talk to the live stream? <laughs> Hi, could you um, state your, your name, your occupation? Uh, I'm Dr. Tristram Wyatt. I'm a senior research fellow at the University of Oxford in the Department of Biology. And I'm here supporting the scientists um, in their campaign. We really do need to take fossil fuel out of the sponsorship of the museum. And as you've been hearing from other people, it's absurd that the Science Museum is taking money, especially for an energy, a green energy gallery, from somebody like Adani. And what's really distressing is we also have Equinor, um, who are about to open Rosebank if they can, that new oil field in the North Sea. They're sponsoring one of the other galleries. So what I want is for the Science Museum to do the right thing and change. Well, thank you so much. Have you been here since last night? No, I'm cooking the brunch for tomorrow. So <laughs> I've just joined today. And I'm really impressed with what's happened. I was here for the launch yesterday with Chris Packham, and I'm really enjoying the pile of coal, which is just so beautifully inventive. It was something that I know was causing a lot of questions and thoughts about ingenuity, about how you could smuggle coal to Newcastle, in effect, inside the museum. And we've done it. And symbolically, it's hugely important because what's missing from these displays is what Adani is really doing. What you'll see on the sponsorship is Adani Green. The coal is there to remind everybody that Adani gets most of its money from selling coal, whether that's from India or from Australia. So you would agree that, yeah, do you think Adani Green is a separate entity that should be sponsored in a museum? Not at all. The structure of the company means that the Adani Green was used as collateral for investing in the Carmichael coal mine in Australia. So they're not separate entities, however much the director of the Science Museum likes to pretend that. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so as Tristan mentioned, um, so the, the Science Museum in this um, sponsorship um, has tried to justify it on the grounds that um, Adani Green is an entirely separate entity. Oh, we're just sponsored by Adani Green, not by Adani itself. But it has come out in leaked documents that Adani Green has been used as collateral for their um, $300 million um, new giant coal mine in Australia. So really, Adani, and, and, this, and this has been revealed through many documents, um, for the various arms of Adani, um, that none, none of Adani's parts are separate, they're all tied together. 
um, and money moves moves amongst them. So there's no such thing as sh- simply being um, sponsored by Adani Green. Um, <laughs> if you're sponsored by Adani, you're sponsored by Adani. Adani is Adani. So let me see if I can talk to another scientist. So we're still here. Hi, I'm on the live. I'm on the live stream. Oh, <laughs> Would you like to say talk to the live stream? Yeah, Tell you why what. Not? Why not? Yeah. Um, could you tell us um, who you are? Would you like to go? Yeah. Would you like to tell us who you are and why you're here? I'm Raffaella. I'm from the local XR Hammersmith and Fulham group. I've been involved in the Fossil Free Science Museum now for, oh, since right at the very beginning, um, since when, when they had uh, Shell and their Future Planet exhibition here. So I'm, I'm very, I'm delighted that this is, we've shut it down. Even just for the weekend, we've shut it down, which is um, what it needs to happen. Hi, and I'm Wilf. Uh, I'm married to Rafaela. I'm also an XR, Hamsworth and Fulham, and here for a bit of moral support. It's a great thing. And I've been around the exhibition already. I've um, had a look around, and I, I'm, I'm horrified. I'm horrified <laughs> by a lot of the exhibits that, that glorify the the, um, the the one over there that says that the um, uh, energy. Sorry, that it's. Oh, they just caught me walking in there. It's, it's, it's a, the. Um, that the efficiency has improved, mm. but it hasn't actually shown that the total quantity has gone up. Or the one over there, the one there's an ex- exhibit over there where you press a button, and one of the options is, um, is uh, you know, why not ask people to use less? And you press that button, and it says, "Oh no, that would be really unpopular. That's not one to do." And so the, this whole, the whole of this exhibition is, is it's greenwash. Yeah. So you don't believe a company like Adani could possibly. Uh, yes, one to eight. I've been involved in the. I've been involved in the. the um, all the way through. I know a lot about Adani. Adani is is corrupt. His human rights abuses. The fact he's he's partnering with Elbit um, in their um, in making the drones that have been dropped dropping bombs in in Gaza at the moment. Uh, the fact he's got a list of cases, outstanding cases going back 15, 20 years of human rights abuses. Um, you know, recently the Adivasi uh, community in, um, they won a, a, a legal battle against him where he's trying to get them off their land so he can dig out the coal. So, you know, there, there's, it's, it's not clear cut, but he gets by by being, um, by being in Modi's shadow. Um, and it's, it's, it's horrendous. Um, so anything can do to support, support, um, it's, it's good. Okay, thank you. I'll let you settle in. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you to our fellow there. Fellow there. Um, so as you mentioned, uh, Modi. So Modi is the um, Prime Minister of India. Um, and so, yeah, Adani has also been um, criticised and not even criticised, accused of um, basically participating in corruption and cronyism within the Indian government, um, which allows it to... Um, yeah, to, to continue to perpetuate these human rights abuses um, in India. So in particular in India, so um, as you mentioned, the um, Adivasi um, are a indigenous people of India. And they have had their land taken um, and cleared for many of these coal projects, um, often without their permission. Um, there's been accusations of harassment, injury, and death. Um, in Dani's conquest of building new coal mines in India. In fact, also the conditions um, in which these mines are being built um, has had allegations that the, um, there's, you know, the work conditions for the workers have been atrocious um, and that there have been deaths in the construction of a new mine in eastern India. So again, does this sound like a company that the Science Museum a museum for education and science for children should be taken money from um, a name that should be on any kind of exhibition at the science museum. The people here do not think so, um, and I'd be inclined to agree. Um, so we're going to, oh, here we go. Also, there's a new edition. Um, so if anyone wants more information also about the human rights abuses of Adani in India, this is one book um, that has been published called An Unraveling, um, Unraveling Tragedy, 
which is all about um, Adani's abuses in India. In fact, let's just... Okay. And, he, and it features um, from the words of the actual um, indigenous people in many places. So as um, Tristan mentioned, the Carmichael mine is going to be the biggest mine in Australia for, for coal. Um, and it has been built um, without permission um, and with, well, frankly, there's been accusations that Adani has lied to the um, Queen's, Queenstown, um, Australia gov um, Council and Government um, about how they're going to build this mine. Um, and they've been clearing out um, certain regions that have like water resources that are needed for the biodiversity there, needed for the people there, the indigenous people. Um, and they've been recklessly um, just tearing the heart out of this region in order to build their mine. Um, so in the actual words of um, a tribal leader from this region, the mine will tear the heart out of our country, permanently destroying our ancestral homelands, as well as sites and species we have held sacred for generations. This threatens the survival of our culture and our ability to pass that culture on to our future generations. Just shocking stuff, um, especially just <laughs> for for an energy source that we cannot um, afford to dig up and burn if um, the we want to survive on this planet. Um, so also, th so this is mentioned in the um, Myanmar Economic Corporation. So that's um, referencing basically. Adani um, has been doing deals with um, the Myanmar um, Economic Corporation, which is funded by the Myanmar um, army, the military. Um, and that, <laughs> so if you don't know, the Myanmar, the Myanmar um, has been sa sanctioned um, for their genocide against the uh, Ro Rohingya, Rohingya people. Um, but Adani is Adani and um, continues to do deals with them. Um, there's been accusations that um, they're continuing to deal with them even though they've publicly stated that they won't. Um, they, they, you know, they built ports for them and have been accused of um, basically um, allowing them to cr uh, make money that is funding human rights abuses and genocide. What? I was... Yeah, I think this is showing on the picture evidence that we've seen of them working with the Myanmar government, despite their human rights abuses. This page is about the work conditions of their mine constructions, in which, I, like I've said, people have died building their mines. on, And these mines being built on indigenous land for a power source that the planet cannot afford to burn. And this company sponsors the Science Museum. <laughs> um, so that is why people are so desperate to get this company out, get the sponsorship out, that they have been occupying the Science Museum this weekend. Um, ahead of, you know, just as the museum opens this gallery and ahead of the school groups that are going to join it and look at these exhibitions starting from this Monday. So let's talk to another occupier, maybe someone who stayed last night and can tell us about how it was. Yeah, it might have come from an Oxfam, I can't remember anymore. Yeah. Are you happy to start in the live stream? Do you want as well? Or? Yeah. yeah, you can check in when I run out of energy. Yeah. So um, could you tell me um, your names and um, yeah, why you're here? Oh, well, my name's Alan. My name's Anthony. And we're here because um, the Science Museum has taken sponsorship money from Adani, one of the biggest coal companies in the world, who are ramping up coal production and coal fire power stations. And yet, the uh, United Nations and the uh, International Energy Agency and the World Bank say that there must be no new oil if we're to have a livable future for our children. Got something to add on that before we talk about their humanities record. 
Um, Humanities, they're, what are they doing? They're, uh, blank. yeah, they're out there. Trust me, they're trust harassing, me. injuring and killing indigenous communities and people in India uh, when they build their uh, um, fossil fuel projects and even their renewable projects. <laughs> They've got a terrible record on genocide as well, haven't they? They're up there. From the Myanmar government and Palestinian, right? Because um, they're in um, business with Elbit. That's for it. making drones, the Hermes 900s. It's 900 drone, isn't it? Yeah, they're in a joint venture for that, for, for weapons in genocide against the Gaza people in Israel. I know the Roy, the Roy Hinga uh, people as well. Yeah. The so I play with the um, main armor government. Yes, they build, they build a big port for them, basically. Yeah, and they've been displaced from uh, their, their lands and, uh, and, and they've been a victim of genocide as well. So, Adani Appalling so Company. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Adani Appalling Company, and yet a uh, science museum has taken Emily yeah. to uh, fund their, of all things, their energy revolution project. Did both of you stay here last night? Did yeah. You? How was that? <laughs> it was yes. okay. It was yeah. right. A bit hard on the floor. Had to turn over probably about every half an hour. There was slept quite noise. Well. Didn't sleep too badly considering. You slept with a good conscience for what you're doing. I guess yeah. so. Yeah, that helps, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I know you're doing the right thing. So, so. feel as though you're acting for the right reason. You sleep a bit better. Yeah. yeah. If you could say anything to the Board of Trustees of the Science Museum, what would you say to them? Just have a think about what you're doing. Stop, just stop and have a think. Don't get entrenched and feel as though you've got to carry on now because you've started. Just stop taking dirty money. Yeah. You can do so much like to not be involved in like genocide and the climate breakdown. And like there's so many other, like the Science Museum, like, that's a pretty big no. topic. Like you could have a much better science exhibition and something that's just yeah. like harmful in many ways it just seems a bit pointless and unnecessary so maybe you can find a better sponsor yeah um, public institution isn't it yeah, yeah it's, um, it's harming way more people than it's yeah maybe inspiring possibly. Yeah. yeah do you feel like maybe there's a social justice issue there where like the you know the science museum is here to widely educate children um but it's for educating children in what well, people might call the imperial core, the, the you know the global north in which we um, enjoy many privileges, um, but using money that is built off the suffering of other children elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. As a, I think as a young person, I mean, like you go to the science museum or as an, any aged person, but like, there's been a lot of young people around here today. You're meant to go and enjoy it and like experience all of the like fun toys and learn stuff. But if you can do that as a child, like surely other children should be able to enjoy like the same thing and if they're like being bombed by Elbit or like I don't know being flooded by a climate breakdown like they're not going to be able to enjoy the same thing so it doesn't make sense that we can enjoy this which is then harmful for other people. It's almost insane for them to posture that the Science Museum is here for the good of children yeah. you know the for some children not yeah. people in Palestine or yeah. around absolutely. the world being affected. Yeah. Who don't even enjoy basic safety yeah yeah Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> so we heard from two campers um, who stayed overnight last night in this gallery. So if anyone just joining us, um, we're here at the Science Museum at the um, Energy Revolution Gallery, which is a new gallery um, sponsored by the Adani Group, which is a um, conglomerate who make 60% of their profits off of coal. Yes, that coal, the coal that um, the IPCC report and the en energy agencies are telling us needs to stay in the ground, cannot be burnt if we want to remain within um, 1.5 or even 2 degrees of pre-industrial warming. Meaning that, um, it, you know, if we keep burning coal, if we keep building mines like Adani wants to, um, they want to extend their um, new coal mines, um, create some of the biggest coal mines um, in the world, uh, they want to build the Carmichael mine in Australia, which is going to be the biggest mine in Australia, forcing off it, peop indigenous people from their lands before many human rights abuses um, to dig up coal that, as a planet, we cannot afford to even burn. It's incredible um, that 
the Science Museum thinks this is an appropriate sponsor for a new energy revolution gallery. So this is why um, this group of young people, supporters and scientists are staying here over the weekend occupying this new gallery. Um, they've been here since Friday. Um, the occupation was kicked off with um, Chris Packham, who made a speech basically calling this um, sponsorship grotesque. So we are here asking the museum, no, not even asking, the man in the museum considers dropping this sponsorship, showing, telling them it has no place in this place of learning, this place for children. Um, so this interview we just had, we kind of touched on the fact that, you know, we, we, the science room is meant to be for um, educating young people. And yet they partner with a company that is actively destroying the futures of those young people here and elsewhere in the world. You know, currently destroying the futures of indigenous children in the regions where they want to build these new coal mines. Um, and destroying the futures of the very children here who visit this museum by wishing to dig up new coal to burn to um, cause more global heating. So people occupying this museum have been here since Friday and they intend to stay here again tonight. They've built this um, coal pile just to show um, the museum and show visitors what is actually at the center of this energy revolution gallery, which likes to have all these exhibitions about new energy sources and yet is funded by the blood money of the coal conglomerate Adani. Um, so we're going to see if anyone else would like to talk to us. I think everyone's very tired because they have stayed here overnight. Um, and you can also probably tell the museum has closed this gallery to the public. They do not want the public to engage with the people here. They do not want the public to see this, this display and these signs, despite the fact they think it's okay to um, accept money from this company, but they do not want their visitors um, to see the protests about it. These are non-violent um, protesters, of course. They come here, they're very, they're very nice. <laughs> they come here with their flyers, with their art, with their voices. Um, but the museum will not even let them, let the public know and the public engage. You will see they've also put up um, banners on the railings um, just to try to, um, so the public can try to see them. And we ha I guess they have already been successful in many ways um, by Opera Gallery because the museum um, wants to close this gallery while they're here. They, we've all, they've already, I guess, effectively shut down the gallery. Well, that was not the aim. They're intending that people, the public can still access it, still look at the materials, but also learn the truth of who is funding this. Um, so they are here. For, they have been here since Friday. Um, they intend to stay all weekend. Next Monday is when um, the museum expects its first school groups to come in here and see this exhibition all about a new energy revolution sponsored by a coal company who also do dealings with Israeli arms manufacturer through um, the joint venture with Elba Systems and the joint venture, um, which I haven't mentioned yet, with um, the Israeli um, war, oh, I, Apologies, I cannot quite remember the um, the full name. It's but the um, Israeli company, the IWI. Um, they also actually have a joint venture with them to produce uh, machine guns, sniper rifles, and assault rifles, which are also being used in the current genocide in Gaza. And this is not the first um, genocidal um, venture that Adani has been involved with. They have also been involved. Um, with the Myanmar government. They've built a port for them. Um, and if for those of you who don't know, the Myanmar government has been sanctioned for their genocide against the Rohingya people. Um, apologies for any mispronunciation there. Um, but yeah, Myanmar has been sanctioned for that. And Adani still continues to do business with the military of Myanmar despite 
um, the known genocide of a people. Um, so it should not be shocking that they are also involved in the weapons manufacturers of the Hermes 900 drones for enjoined with Elbit, the um, Israeli weapons manufacturer, to use these drones for the bombing of Palestinians in the current ongoing Israeli-Palestinian genocide. So, I think we'll now try to do, talk to someone else who stayed here. Um, he stayed here over Friday night and intends to continue to stay here. Um, for those of you just joining, um, we are here at the Green, the Energy Revolution Gallery, sponsored by um, the company Adani, um, with a group of scientists, young people, and supporters basically occupying the museum for the weekend, staying here overnight, demanding the museum um, drops this sponsor for many, many reasons. Um, and they've built here in the middle of the gallery um, a coal pile showing and demonstrating to visitors and everyone what is actually at the center of this energy revolution gallery sponsored by Adani Green. Center is a pile of coal and human rights abuses and weapons. Um, and you also see um, on this coal pile is a bunch of cards, basically with messages from the occupiers about why they're occupying and what they would like to say to the museum. And this will go to the museum. So let's see if we can talk to a few more people. So over here we have um, a couple of scientists. Let me check if they're okay with talk. Hi, are you guys happy to talk on live stream? Great. Okay, so I'm here with, um, oh yeah, could you tell me your names and um, yeah, what, what you do and why you're here? Sure. I'm, I'm Aaron. Uh, I'm uh, an ecologist by training, and I'm here at the uh, Adani-sponsored New Energy Gallery at the Science Museum. And of course, Adani is the world's largest coal producer in private coal producer in the world. So um, we're here to protest the fact that this is um, an exhibit about energy and climate change being sponsored by exactly the kind of companies that are making this crisis worse. And we're saying this is completely wrong. And uh, we're here to say that, you know, as scientists, we're opposed to the sponsorship deal and we think the museum should have no fossil fuel sponsors now or going forward because uh, of the, the urgency of the climate crisis. My name's Pete Knapp. I'm an air quality uh, researcher. And a big part of coal burning, of course, is the air pollution that it causes. And uh, Poland is one of the biggest coal uh, burning countries in Europe and it has the worst air pollution because of it. And I really worry about a lot of parts of the world that rely on, burn, uh, on, on burning coal that don't have the same amount of measurement of air quality and the links with that and children's health, um, which is a, a real concern of mine. So when I first got into air quality working in Beijing, I saw at first hand the effect that air pollution has on children. And that's motivated me to be here, um, as, as well as the, the human rights abuses and selling weapons and all the rest of the horrible stuff that they do. Um, I have a sense of uh, duty from an air quality perspective to be here to represent that aspect of the whole. Do, yeah, do you find a shock in that um, for a museum that's targeted for children? It's, you know, we, we, we say this institution exists to teach children and to inspire children, um, yet are sponsored by a company that's actively ruining their futures. Yeah, exactly. It's totally nuts. <laughs> and I think, um, you know, ultimately, I think real questions have to be asked about the, the leadership of this institution. It's like, why, do, why on earth do they think this was appropriate or responsible? Like, what kind of management is that that would allow something like this to go ahead? I, I think there's been real negligence on the part of the management here to, that they thought that this was at all appropriate. You know, it's not like the facts of the matter aren't clear. In fact, we know now that uh, the, the Science Museum's management were given a dossier about this company, Adani, and its crimes and frauds it's caught up in and, you know, the abuses, the human rights abuses that it's been involved with. Um, and they were told, you know, because of this, they probably aren't a suitable... <laughs> A person to partner with, and yet they went ahead and partnered with them anyway. <laughs> like, but but it, it seems like 
due process was, wasn't followed in this instance. And I think that should be a concern for all of us because this is a public institution. It represents, represents all of us. And as scientists in particular, I think it represents science. So this is giving science a bad name, you know, and it's, it's tarnishing the reputation of this institution. Uh, it's a real reputational harm that's, that I think from the decisions that the management have taken. And we're saying, you know, we can do better than this. And actually, like ma many cultural institutions in the UK have done better. So, you know, you've got things like the Scottish Ballet and the Royal Opera and, um, you know, the, the uh, National Portrait Gallery. They've all cut ties with fossil fuel companies in the last few years. It's, it's a really sh shocking to me that the Science Museum would be one of the last institutions to do that, right? They should have been the first uh, and shown leadership on this uh, based on the science of climate, of climate change that has been produced. So I think what I would really like to see is the management, you know, step up and do the right thing and make an announcement saying that they're going to stop all fossil fuel sponsorships you know, going on from now. Like, and I think that's not an impossible task. Uh, you know, there are other sponsors that they could turn to if they, if they need to. And I think the, the fact that they keep going back, because this is not the first time, is it, Pete, that, that we've been here uh, uh, about this issue. We were here a few years ago because they took sponsorship from Shell, the oil and gas company, um, for a different exhibit. And again, it was completely clear at that time that that was an inappropriate sponsor as well, and yet they followed up by doing the same thing again. So we're back again, uh, because I think unless we put on more and more public pressure to kind of um, you know tell the museum that this is not what we want, then they're clearly going to keep doing the same thing. Um, but I think it's ultimately it's only a matter of time, right? Because the climate crisis is getting worse. Their position is more out of line with everybody else in the sector. At some point, they, they can't keep this, this up. And I think you know, if we put on enough pressure now, I think we could bring a, an end to this sponsorship deal quite soon. Yeah, th this wasn't like your fir the first tactic um, deployed here in this fight. Like, you know, you've written the petitions, you've written the letters, you've tried all the quote unquote, you know, official channels, right, to oppose this. And I spoke a lot with the trustees of the museum directly, and, and we. Uh, they have a lot of influence on what happens here and uh, with my university we have uh, three or four uh, members who are trustees here so I spoke with tried to speak with them directly and it was really difficult to do that um, I think people are aware of the problems but feel disempowered even as trustees to make a difference because they feel that they're, they're the smallest voice, even in, even as a position of a trustee. So I think there's a real problem across the whole chain of people feeling disempowered, even the trustees of the, of the museum. And I think if we can show that they have a sense of empowerment, that, that, that if they all glue their minds together, that they have a, 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 a synod, synergy, then that would be a huge step. I mean, particularly shocking was the fact that several of the trustees, uh, very famous scientists, have resigned from their trustee position on the board because of their disgust at what's going ahead. And they said, I can't be part of this because my voice is not being heard when I speak up and say this is wrong. And they felt they had no choice left but to resign. And that included, actually, the former director of the Science Museum, who was a member of the Science Museum's advisory board. And he's had to resign his position because, again, he says, I can't be a part of this. This is wrong. So why is this museum still doing this? It's got to stop. It's got to stop. That's a serious question. Like, what, what, what motivates this? What is happening here that, is, that we don't understand, almost? Like we, everyone here thinks this is wrong. Someone along the line thinks it's right. And who is that person and why do they think it's right? Well, I mean, we can guess that it's related to, uh, to some extent, corruption at the top. People who feel that they're able to scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of thing. Um, Adani is uh, um, considering or putting together a policy think tank. We know that that is their way of trying to manipulate government policy. And the way for them to do that is to get um, uh, the public on board by doing this kind of thing. So to help them along that, that journey to becoming political um, manipulators. And that seems to me as though that's the reason. But what is it that Ian Blatcher is getting out of this? Something I'm struggling with. He's the director of the museum currently. Yeah. What, what, what's, what's motivating him to, to do something that everyone knows, including him, is wrong? 
Well, they've tried to justify it saying that this is a Donny Green. It's the Green Branch. And some, some members of the public might try to argue, oh, but shouldn't we take their money if we'll use it for a good cause for like this kind of, I mean, what would you say to that kind of argument? Well, you're right. That is the line that the museum has said. They said, oh, no, no, we're not, we're not in partnership with the Donny. We're only in partnership with the Donny Green, which is the renewables uh, company. But it's, it's, it's all the same company, right? They're actually a subsidiary of this larger company. And this larger company, as I said before, is the largest producer of coal in the world. And these, these parts of different parts of it are not separate. They're, they're actually all tied and entangled together. And so, you know, it's now in the public record that Adani uh, uh, used the, the shares and the, the value of Adani Green to borrow to invest in a new coal mine in Australia called the Carmichael Coal Mine, which is actually pushing indigenous populations of Aboriginals off their land, from, you know, it, it, um, against their will. And this is this is uh, you know the kind of company that this, that we're talking about, right? So this this argument that somehow uh, uh, this Adani Renewables is separate from or, or somehow distinct from the rest of what Adani is doing is it's a sham, right? It's a really see-through sham, and it's, it's kind of a, a, a bit. Um, they're taking us for fools if they think that's, that, that that's going to convince us that, that this is legitimate, right? They, they clearly don't have much respect for the general public if they think that that's going to, to be able to fool them. Um, as to your other point, I think, I think clearly our institutions are, are underfunded and they do need support. And I think you know, that's why they turn to these companies to get investment and sponsorship. I, I, like I said, I think there are other much better sponsors who could step in. But uh, you know, there has to be certain ethical boundaries to, to where that goes. Because ultimately, these companies are getting something in return, right? They're not just giving this money philanthropically for no reason. They're doing it to buy um, social license, we would say, right? So effectively, what that means is that they're greenwashing them. So it's useful through buying these connections, and these sponsorship deals, so to look like they're legitimate players in, in public life. But the, the facts are really clear that, you know, they are working against the public good through all of their business decisions. And so they shouldn't be given that legitimacy at all. And it's wrong for the scientific uh, institution like the Science Museum to lend their legitimacy of science to a rogue company like Adani. I've, I've, I just pulled up a graph, uh, something that I think you found, Aaron, um, which is the, the, fi the financial years of coal production um, from Adani. And this is a, a fairly rapid increase. So this is the financial year 2023. It's more than, well, it's about double um, the previous year. So this isn't something which Adani has just always sort of been chugging away at. Um, they're, they're rapidly increasing their coal production. Um, Even as this exhibit is telling us that right. we have to stop burning fossil fuels, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I was about to say, this is about a energy revolution about how we need to transition away and they're burning not just fossil fuels, the dirtiest fossil yeah. fuel, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly that. Yeah, so every, every sign in this exhibit is saying we need to transition away from coal, sponsored by a company who's accelerating the growth of coal. Mm. What else needs to be said? So I just wanted to quickly touch on um, the role of the public in this protest. Um, so we've talked, talked, talked a lot about um, the trustees and about people and management and power, but what they should do. What should the public do? If public, I, can, I, I, I noticed that um, the museum has closed, actually, this to the public. They don't want them to see um, your beautiful um, coal pile and talk to you guys about this. Um, but we're getting the word out uh, through social media. So what would you like the public to do to um, pressure this point, you know? Yeah, we, um, I've just been outside of the, uh, the entrance to the, to the exhibit and the security there saying no, the exhibit is closed, but they're not providing any information as to why. So that information is being denied to the public about what it, what it is that, that is the problem here. So it's up to us to talk to the public about this, which is um, uh, a way that we're trying to do it through social media, through the, through the news and so on. But what is it that people want to know when they read an article like this? Is how, how should they um, interact with it? What can they do about it? And there's, uh, but because this is a, a, a public, publicly owned, essentially museum, they have a right to tell the museum owners here, the, the museum uh, directors here, of what it is they want. And that includes things like who they want sponsoring 
um, a, a museum that's about energy revolution. Um, and, and how can people do that? They can go onto the website. Uh, they can send an email. It's a bit of a process. It may take you 30 minutes or something. But that's something that people at home who, who might be watching this thinking, I'm really enraged by this, but how can I get involved? That's something which you can do. And also talk to other uh, museums in your area and say, how do you feel about the uh, Science Museum and, and their perspective on, on, on coal um, sponsorships? And hear what they have to say. I'm talking to other museums about the Science Museum, it generates a bit of competition. They'll say, oh, well, we're not like them. Uh, and, and that might help other museums then double down on, on, on steering, steering clear from that. And I think we're going to have to see more protests like this as well. Right? So what I would say is there are lots of protest groups. We're actually a whole coalition of protest groups, uh, which are going under the umbrella of Fossil Free Museum. So if you Google Fossil Free Museum, you can find this website and join one of those groups who are taking action here. And we're going to keep coming back and keep doing more and more protests. We'll keep escalating the protests in order to make sure that the museum gets our message and changes course. Um, you know, it's ultimately only through all of us, um, you know, making clear that what the museum is doing is wrong, enough of us doing that, that, that they'll be left with no choice but to do the right thing. Yeah, so you talked about like um, people feeling powerless, even the trustees feeling powerless to um, change these things that they believe are wrong. But if we all clack, um, act, uh, act in, you know, um, in together, basically, yeah. that. Yeah, it's raising our voices together and joining uh, together because together we're really powerful. We have a loud voice when we speak together, right? And that's why we come together in groups and take protests together. Yeah. Any, any individual trying to make a change is going to find it incredibly difficult. And people watching this at home on their own may be feeling that exact feeling of being the how what can i do in my home in my situation and the what i would recommend to people in that position is joining groups joining a group who are doing something that, that you feel passionate about and i would just say look you know that this is successful right because i mentioned all these other museums that have already cut ties to fossil fuels well a lot of those happen because of similar campaigns to this one that have gone before us and so, um, you know, there's been organizations like BP or not BP and Culture Unstained who have you know, very successfully raised this question, challenged the institutions that they care about in the arts and uh, in theater and so on, and said, this is, this is not okay. And ultimately they won that argument and ultimately enough of them came together to change things, right? So, so it's possible. And I think we will see this museum change its policy. The question is how soon? And I think the answer to that question is, well, how many people get involved? Yeah. yeah. And also, when um, if, if there's a change in director, that may help to accelerate this change. Um, but, well, we, we can't wait for these things to happen. We have to put pressure on the situation as it is now. And this is, I guess, why people feel that a change in government may suddenly create loads of change as well. Oh, don't worry, if things will change when and if Labour get into power. But if we, ch if we wait for changes of, uh, of, of governance, that's not what we need. It's the pressure needs to apply, be applied on whoever it is in power at that time. And so we can't rely on a change in power, although that may help to accelerate these things. It, uh, that can't be our dominant feeling, in my view, anyway. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. I'll get you, let you get back onto things. Um, so yeah, we just spoke to two scientists who um, stayed overnight. Um, at this museum, at the um, Energy Revolution Gallery. So if you're just joining us, um, we're here at the Energy Revolution Gallery, which is sponsored by the coal giant Adani, um, who um, make 6% of the profits off of coal, and they're sponsoring a gallery about uh, the new energy revolution and how we need to move away from coal and fossil fuels. Um, and a group of young people and scientists have stayed here overnight and are staying here all weekend, um, to basically ask the museum to drop this toxic sponsor. Um, I'm Mars, my pronouns are they, them. Um, and I mean, this over the part, like the real reason I'm here is because not just because of the cold, but because over the past six months, we've watched Israel commit a genocide in, on Palestinians in Gaza um, and colonizing their land. And Adani is complicit in this. Adani supports the Israeli military. Adani is working with the IDF. Mm -hmm. And that is a completely unacceptable thing for the Science Museum or for anyone to be supporting. Um, 
they're complicit in the Adonia's complicit in the murder of innocent Palestinians, and therefore the Science Museum is as well. To be honest, mm. it's uh, somebody earlier said it was uh, blood money. It is blood money, and so um, Adani makes drones. Yes, correct for Israel. Mm -hmm. They're working together, is what I. Mm. But yeah, there's so many fossil fuel companies and coal companies and oil companies that are profiting off of like Israel's colonial project. And Adani is one of them. Like, um, Adani has a track record of just destroying and uh, indigenous and local lands and livelihoods. Mm. And Palestine is another one of them. Um, I mean, the Science Museum, they responded in a quite a condescending letter to people who have made protests before. Mm. And, um, and they also ignored a lot of what Adani's done and they're still going forward with being sponsored. Um, and like, I'm not a scientist, I'm just, I'm a youth. Like, I don't know much about anything, anything works, but from my perspective, this is just completely unacceptable and it's just, it's killing people, it's killing the environment. And I, the Science Museum is, shouldn't be supporting that. Mm. Everyone's gonna know what Adani is doing. Mm. Um, and, I mean, I think it's important to get out there that this is something the Science Museum is supporting. Yeah. Yeah, so the Science Museum has been accepting possible sponsorship for over 10 years now. Um, and there's been ongoing campaigns um, happening um, involving scientists, young people, um, art workers, um, indigenous communities around the world. Um, so the museum is currently being sponsored by um, BP and um, Equinor. Uh, but they're also, I've then just recently um, taken on Adani as well, which is a coal company um, that is uh, mining in India and Australia. Mm. Um, and it also has many links to, um, as I think it was already mentioned, many links to um, Israel as well, mm. um, which is absolutely appalling, especially with the genocide that's going on right now. Um, so, yeah, there's been yeah, ongoing campaigns against it. We've tried to talk with the museum. Um, there's been many open letters and petitions, um, peaceful protests outside just a few weeks ago. How many years has it been going on now? Um, so oh, you said 10. Yeah, there's been 10 years yeah. of, uh, that the museum's been um, accepting these sponsorships. And then I guess there's been like an uh, increase in protests in maybe the last four or five years. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's been it's it's ongoing, and I don't think that we're going to be stopping anytime soon until the museum um, agrees to stop accepting mm. possible sponsorship. Yeah, well, we've just been completely ignored, um, and they've not tried to, um, you know, communicate with us in any way. They've just denied um, our arguments and um, comments. They've come out with blatant lies. So um, they're currently claiming that they're only working with Adani Green Energy, which is their like um, green energy wing. Mm. Um, even though we've got freedom of information requests that are proving that the the original discussions and sponsorship deals was with Adani, like the conglomerate, um, uh, so includes the coal company and includes their like weapons manufacturing wing. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's appalling that as like young people and scientists, they should be very much um, listening to us. Without scientists, this museum would not exist, um, and the museum claims to be a space of education for future and future generations and if they can't listen to their own future generations I think it's yeah it's gonna be very tricky for them mm -hmm. yeah so I'm part of youth action for climate justice um uh there's a number of youth groups around um involved today which is really really nice kind of showing that actually we're, there's so many um young people wanting to be involved in this because it's such an important issue mm -hmm. um yeah we've previously occupied the museum uh, twice before uh, when the museum, uh, their last climate uh, gallery was a temporary gallery being sponsored by Shell, uh, so another fossil fuel company, um, and we yeah. occupied the museum then to draw attention to that and to ask them to drop their Shell um, sponsorships. They, they, that sponsorship deal has come to an end because it was a temporary exhibition, but they mm. still haven't managed to... They've um, not renewed it, right? They've not mm. renewed it, but it, they, they have left that open to possibility in the future, so they've not committed to not, never working with Shell again. They've got um, so many uh, new kind of 
uh, so many sponsorships that they could be cutting. Um, if they brought Shell back in again, I think that would just be atrocious. We've seen, I think often museums say, oh, well, we've already got this deal going. Like we've, you know, we've got to be faithful to our deals and stuff. Mm. But we've seen other museums um, around the country and internationally that have already been cutting ties with um, fossil fuel companies. Royal Shakespeare Company, um, you know, midway through their deal, uh, uh, ended their um, sponsorship, their partnership with uh, BP. Um, and across the country in the last 10 years, we've seen, um, you know, tens of museums ending these ties. And it's only the Science Museum and British Museum that are left mm. with that sponsorship. I mean, we've had really positive um, response to us as protesters. A lot of, uh, you know, visitors to the museum are absolutely shocked. This is who our music... <laughs> um, yeah, visitors to the museum have been absolutely shocked at um, the, the sponsorship deals. The mm. plain greenwash, um, you know, like there is large concerns among the global, like general population right now around climate and the inaction. Yeah. And to then have our science museum, which should be like promoting innovation and, um, you know, love for science, to then be, um, you know, painted with these problematic um, possible companies that are ruining our future. Um, I think there's very much like strong feelings behind this. Um, and when we talk to visitors, yeah, they wanted to learn more. They wanted to support us. Um, you know, we had um, uh, with the, I mentioned the Shell exhibition, we had a mm. boycott um, the, of the exhibition that was really popular. Um, lots of people signing up to the boycott to say that they're not going to be um, visiting this gallery. They're not going to work with it. And we've had seen similar with the Adani exhibition mm. that loads of people just, yeah, don't want to be associated with it and don't want to be visiting. And we know that this is one Adani is trying to move into the UK more and more. Uh, and um, this is like one of their first kind of ventures, like public ventures, I guess. Um, we just heard yesterday, I think, or a few days ago, um, that Adani is opening a think tank and uh, a new think tank that's going to be having a branch in London. Um, and, you know, so it's, it's clear that they are trying to use this as a way to gain positive image. Yes. And it's perfect for them to be associated with a green energy company in um, I've got, um, I'm at university and I spoke to a lecturer who um, grew up in Australia and was mm -hmm. saying about this. And he was saying if they had attempted to do this in a science museum in Australia, like it, everyone would be laughing at them because it is so known in Australia how damaging are done. Yes. And they're able to get away with that in London because mm -hmm. we don't know about it. And that is what we're trying to do. Are you happy to speak on the live stream? <laughs> Hi, um, can you let us know um, your name and... Um... Yeah, who, who are you and why are you here, basically? I'm Charlie, Dr. Charlie Gardner. I'm a conservation scientist and here in the Science Museum, new, the new Energy Futures Gallery in the Science Museum, um, because I just find it completely unacceptable that a science museum, like a public face of science, is legitimizing the world's largest coal producer. Like, yeah, you know, science has made it really, really, really clear that we have to stop digging out and burning coal. Like, there's just no two ways about it. And yet, here is a science museum, like, celebrating, almost, the world's largest coal company. And it, it's like, um, you know, like, over the last few years, these, these fossil fuel companies, have, people are increasingly recognizing that they are public enemy number one. Yeah, they are what's standing in the way of a better future for us. And that's a real problem for them. Like, they've always presented themselves as the good guys, we're the guys that power all your dreams and make all the good stuff happen. But society is turning against them, right? Because we know what they're doing. So, so they're losing the goodwill they have from society. They're losing their social license to operate. And their response to that is to try and buy credibility by sponsoring cultural institutions, museums and arts and even you know, sports events and things like that. Because when you see... When you see the name of a company associated with good stuff that you like, you just automatically just think, ah, oh, you know, good company, good, nice guys. Um, and, and so that's their tactic, basically. That's how one of the ways in which the fossil fuel industries are trying to prolong their existence for as long as possible is by buying legitimacy, by, by, by sponsoring these things. And so this is one of the things that we can do, as not just as activists, but as ordinary citizens, is we can put pressure on these organizations that are legitimizing greenwashing fossil fuels to make them stop. And, you know, once we, this is just one, one of the many different ways we work to try and bring down the fossil fuel industry.
Yeah. So you, you would tell people, I guess a lot of people would say that this gallery is okay because they're using the money well, you know, or it's okay to take dirty money if it's being used for something good. But you're saying that actually that gives a kickback, basically, that gives a benefit to these companies. Whereas we could have just taken money from a company that isn't getting a social license kickback, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, um, I think maybe, maybe sponsorship money is harder to come by from good organizations because good organizations don't need to launder their, their image. They don't need to, to, to do it because they already have a good image. So, so, you know, perhaps it's the case that, that, and it is true, of course, that, you know, cultural institutions do lack funding these days. They get a lot less funding from central government and from other sources than they used to. So it's understandable that, that um, you know, they accept sponsorship, but they shouldn't be accepting sponsorship from, from, from these companies. But there's another level as well. And that, you know, I've, I've no idea how much influence the, the sponsors had on the like curatorial decisions that were made about what story this exhibit exhibition shows. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that, that Adani had an influence over what the exhibition shows. We don't know that. But what is clear is that the story this exhibition paints is one that is favorable to Adani because the story that this exhibition is 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 um, portraying is a very positive one. It's about technology and innovation and developing all these cool things that will be you know, really cool in the future. But all these cool technologies only become carbon you know, climate solutions when they replace the bad old technologies. It, now, if, you, if you pan to your right, there's a wind turbine, right? Um, and we all celebrate. Um, this amazing winds technology. But the fact is, this winds technology hasn't replaced mm. fossil fuels. It's just been added to the mix as we've used more and more um, energy. So, so wind turbines alone are not a climate solution. It's wind turbines in combination with shutting down fossil fuels is a climate solution. And that's not the story this, this is telling. Do you think it almost gives like a false hope saying like, oh, it's OK, um, just keep up the status quo because it'll be OK. Well, because, we're in, you know, we're, we're introducing these new things. We've got technology. Um, don't question it. Don't challenge it. Just let us continue. I absolutely think that. Yeah, that, that's completely the case. You can walk around here and think, oh, good. Someone's <laughs> doing the work. Everything's going to be fine. And that has that has a number of, of different effects. One is that it makes you think, well, if people are on the case, I don't need to be contributing, putting pressure on the government or putting pressure on other people because, you know, the work's already on the way. But beyond that, I think it also undermines the sense of urgency. Like, you know, it is, we are in a planetary emergency and everything needs to change as quickly as possible. What this exhibition is saying, it's like patting on the head and going, oh, there, there, it'll be okay. The grown-ups have got it under control. We're taking care of it. But that is not the case. That is an untruth. It is misleading. And I'm not saying that this exhibition is being deliberately misleading, but by telling only half the story, I do worry that the impact of this exhibition on visitors is one that undermines the urgency of transitioning away from fossil fuels. And there's no doubt that that is a convenient story for the sponsors of Dami. And by putting this uh, coal pile here, you're basically putting um, the other half of that story there. <laughs> you're basically saying that here's the other half and they have closed the exhibition. They do not want the visitors here <laughs> to see the other half of the story, right? That's exactly. Yeah, we're completing the picture here and, and the Science Museum have decided that that is an, an, an unacceptable message for the public to see. And that, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I think that's a bit of a concern um, for an institution that has an educational role. Like, yes, this is not um, an authorised exhibit, but it is an exhibit of educational value. And, and they're denying that to, to, to their public, which is, I mean, it's a, 
I'll have to think more about how I feel about that, but I think it, it's, it's pretty dodgy to me, I think. No, especially as, like, you know, we say that science is here to tell the truth and to be impartial and all these things. Um, and they're kind of showing their, show, yeah, showing what they actually think of science, um, right, if they're just allowing this information to be cut out. Yeah, well, th th this actually touches back on my other bigger, deeper fundamental problem with, with fossil fuel sponsorship. It's not just that, you know, fossil fuels need to end, so we need to take away their social license to operate. It's also the case that, you know, so not coal industry so much, but oil and gas industry has been aware of climate change for, you know, 50, 60 years and decided that their approach would be to just try and carry, rather than transitioning, to just carry on doing what they do, try and eke it out for as long as possible. And certainly since the 80s, the strategy of the oil and gas industries to do that, or at least some players within the oil and gas industries to do that, has been to actively undermine public trust in science, to make people doubt scientists, to try to make people think that scientists are corrupt and have this agenda of, of climate change to, you know, take away your nice things and stuff. It's an explicitly anti-science agenda, and I just find it extraordinary the scientific institution to take money from people with an anti-science agenda. Yeah. Especially since other museums have dropped their sponsorships. Um, how, how is it that the Science Museum of all museums, <laughs> the first one that should have, still carries it? It's crazy. It really is the last outlier. So all sorts of cultural institutions and museums um, have, over the last few years in this country and other countries, tied, yeah, severed their ties to fossil fuels. And because they understand that taking that money was wrong and also i think just on a more pragmatic business orientated um, way of thinking about things that taking that money was damaging their reputation as an organization so it's it's not good it is really quite extraordinary that the science museum is the last holdout as you said it's 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 hard to explain and that's why you're here for the weekend, right? Uh, staying over, like, and this isn't the first thing that you've tried. Um, there's been other tactics trying to appeal to the Science Museum. This is almost like a last resort, right? But we'll keep coming back if they just, or if they're stubborn like this, right? Yeah, there's, you know, there's, um, unless we remove fossil fuel organizations out of our society, then then none of us have a nice future. So yeah, we're not gonna stop. We've got our lives and, uh, and everything we love to fight for. And, and yeah, I will, um, I'll see you here again, Science Museum, if you don't do what you need to do. Thank you for that. Thank you for your time. So yeah, we were just talking to a scientist um, who is staying over here on the weekend. Um, so if you've just joined us, um, we are currently in the Energy Revolution Gallery at the Science Museum, which is sponsored, um, funded by Adani. Um, for those who don't know, Adani makes 60% of its profits off of coal. Um, I think I heard someone say they are the largest um, coal producer in the world. Um, this gallery is supposedly sponsored by Adani Green, um, but that is not um, a separate entity as they try to um, present it as. Adani Green is just one branch of Adani um, and has been implicated that um, Adani moves money around its company. Um, the Adani Green was actually used um, as, the, the assets basically of Adani Green were used as collateral for a um, $300 million um, new mine. They were building um, the Carmichael Mine in Australia. Um, it was used for collateral um, for that loan to build that mine. Um, so as you can see, Adani Green is just Adani um, and is used for its coal um, production. So we are here in this gallery, um, which is currently occupied by scientists, supporters, and young people. Um, they've occupied this gallery and basically tried to complete the story of this gallery, because this gallery is about the energy revolution. It is about how um, we need to change or how we get energy, how we need to transition away from fossil fuels. And yet it leaves out this big, um, portion of, of the gallery, of the information in this gallery, that it is paid for and sponsored by a company that is ramping up its coal production. It is not following the advice of this gallery. It is uh, ramping up coal production. And um, 
You may also notice um, some other messages here. Um, and this is because Adani isn't just um, in coal, it is also in weapons manufacturing. Um, Adani has had a joint venture with Elbit, which is an um, Israeli weapons manufacturer. Um, so they, they made a joint venture called um, the Adani Elbit. Um, and in, it, in this um, venture, they have been producing um, Hermes 900 drones, um, which, are then, which are unmanned drones that, bom that are used for bombing. Um, and are currently, currently being used by Israel in the ongoing Palestinian genocide in Gaza. They are also um, in league with the IWI, um, producing machine guns, uh, sniper rifles, and assault rifles. So supporters here are not just here to protest its um, involvement in coal, it is, they're also here to protest its involvement in human rights abuses, and weapons, um, it's, and it's not just weapons, it's human rights abuses in the building of these coal mines. Um, they have been basically accused of pushing out um, in indigenous people from their lands, destroying very delicate ecosystems, draining water in Australia and India, and human rights abuses in the building of these mines. For example, in Eastern India, there have been um, injuries and deaths um, in the building of their minds. If you'd like more information, um, there was a fantastic um, book that you can look up called An Unraveling Tragedy um, by the Science Museum Group. Um, this, will, this goes into all the human rights abuses, the weapons manufacturing, and their involvement in ramping up coal production at a time when the IPCC and various energy um, bodies have told us that we can no longer afford um, to be burning coal. We can no longer even just burn the oil and gas reserves that we have. Um, and coal is one of those dirtiest fossil fuels are, there are. And they want to ramp it up. Um, and by sponsoring this gallery, the science museum have basically given them social license saying, this company's all right. <laughs> um, we are happy, we're proud to have the name of this company on this gallery, and we are happy with them helping us produce a gallery all about energy, all about the energy revolution. Um, and yeah, so many people here are so upset by this sponsorship um, that they are willing to occupy this gallery for the weekend. Um, they've been here since Friday. Um, they intend to stay here all weekend um, in, in, and basically, um, they have not um, intended to shut down this gallery. They have occupied it and built this coal pile here in order to um, complete the story of the gallery that um, the Science Museum have conveniently left out. Um, and, but they weren't intending to shut it down. They were intended for the public to come in and to engage with them and tell the public the truth about who is sponsoring this gallery. But instead, the um, museum have clearly decided to shut the gallery. They decided that the public should not hear about this, they should not learn about this, that this is an unacceptable message, basically, for the public to hear. Um, and they have denied, yeah, basically tried to deny the truth and tried to basically pull the wool over the public's eye. So if you'd like to know more information about um, Adani, you can visit um, Stop Adani, um, the website Stop Adani. If you Google it, you'll find it. Um, or you can visit um, Fossil Free Science Museum, um, which is an ongoing campaign to get um, these fossil fuel companies out of our institutions. Um, and we encourage you to write to the museum, to tell them about your displeasure about um, this sponsorship. That's something that you can do from home. Um, you can tell, you know, spread the word. Um, you'll find our social medias um, and all of our information about the sponsorship, about this campaign. Um, and this group will be here all weekend. Um, unfortunately, yes, they've, they've closed the gallery so the, the public cannot hear this truth or see this. Um, that's why we are live streaming. That's why we are going on social media. That's why we are trying to get um, this information out. Um, so this has been Shanna. Um, I, myself, I'm a scientist. Um, I, 
I have a degree in applied physics and a master's in space engineering. I used to find this gal this um, museum very inspirational. Um, if you visit it, you know that they have a wonderful um, space exhibition that used to inspire me when I was young. Um, but <laughs> there were continued uh, affiliation with the companies that are actively destroying my future has we, yeah, um, it's it's been very upsetting. Um, you know, they um, they exist to inspire. They say they exist to inspire the youth, um, to teach and inspire um, an interest in science, and yet they are participating in um, joint sponsorships with companies that are actively destroying my future and the future of so many other um, young people. And you know. Their, their involvement in weapons and human rights abuses are endangering children in real time, in real time of um, these indigenous populations, of Palestinians, of, and then of every single child that comes and visits this exhibition. Um, their future is being ruined by the fossil fuel industry, by the dirtiness of coal, and the fact that the Science Museum thinks it's acceptable to accept sponsorship money and give a social license to this kind of company while saying they care about children, about the, say they care about science, while saying they care about inspiring young people to get into science is just grotesque. <laughs> um, to, you, to lend that word from Chris Packham, who opened this occupation up on Friday. So, we're here in the Energy Revolution Gallery, sponsored by Adani, with a group of scientists, supporters, and young people asking the museum to please drop the, the sponsorship by the coal giant Adani. Um, so this has been Shanna. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, we are going to switch off the stream now. Um, but this group will be here all weekend. And as many people have said, I've interviewed, we will not give up this fight so long as there is sponsorship money coming in from such dirty companies into our institutions. We will continue to come back to ask these institutions to do the right thing and to get Adani out of our treasured institutions and the, our places for, for children, the places that are meant to be inspiring places that are meant to um, educate us on scientific truth. Thank you for watching. Signing off. I'm very happy to be here today on this momentous day for the inaugurations of the Energy Revolution Gallery at the Science Museum. I've always believed that our lives are part of a bigger story. It is our duty to take care of our planet, not only for these generations and the next, but also for the generations to come. This new gallery is about more than just a clean air are about moving away from oil and gas. This gallery is special because it makes us think, dream, and wish for change. It shows us how our world, our economy, and our own lives can change for the better. We're outside the VIP opening for the Energy Revolution Gallery at the Science Museum. We've just been talking to the invited guests in the queue. 
which included journalists, contributors to the gallery, trustees, and highlighting to them that far from being some progressive, climate-friendly company, Adani is the world's biggest private producer of coal. So it's Adani Green Energy, the renewables brand sponsoring this new gallery. But the reality is it's not separate from the rest of the Adani group, which is involved in coal mines, coal power, weapons. So right now, Adani is forcing through these coal investments on the lands of indigenous peoples in India and Australia who have been resisting for years and years and years before this gallery was even a thing. We have some flyers just for some information and everyone in the queue was open to having a conversation, learning the reality about Adani. But security were very heavy handed for a time pushing us out of the way and really wanting to shut down the conversation about the sponsor. I mean, if the museum is so determined that being sponsored by Adani is the right thing, which it's not, it should at least be accountable, open, and invite the debate and the scrutiny. The museum hasn't even announced that this gallery is opening, and it opens next week. So there's been this desire to try and dodge controversy, avoid embarrassment, because they know that Adani is toxic, it is a human rights violating company, it is mired in controversy of corruption. They shouldn't have touched them with a barge pole. And this sponsorship deal will end sooner or later. Adani is also partnering with the Israeli weapons company Elbit Systems. And Elbit produces drones and other weapons currently being used on the Palestinian people in Gaza right now. And so by working with them, Adani is profiting from that genocide of Palestinian people having right now. And so yes, it's about coal, yes, it's about climate, but it's also about justice. We need to stand with the Palestinian people and call out those companies that are profiting from that genocide.